morning. This training is for those of you that are interested in applying for the fiscal year 22 Lease of California statewide target grant program. My name is Cindy Logan. I'm the division chief over the Lease of Grants unit at the Governor's Office of Emergency Services. Today we have William Chan and Katie Hardaway, program representatives. Before I start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Number one, the presentation is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing later. Everyone who has joined should be on listen mode. We can't see or hear you and the raise hand feature is off as well. All questions concerning the RFP, the process or programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. We have two presentations for you today. The first one is the request for proposal overview training. And the second one is the grant proposal training forms training. So first up is Katie Hardaway, and she's gonna present on the request for proposal overview training. Good morning, everybody. I'll be going over the request for proposal overview. Let's get started. Our agenda today is Alyssa's Grants Unit contact information, program overview, the purpose of the grant, eligibility criteria, funding for the LS program and funding for the LG program, preference points, programmatic components, reporting requirements, proposal rating sheet, checklist of required Cal OES forms. I'm gonna apologize up front because I'm going to be reading the slides through, but I wanna make sure that you have the detail of the information that we're providing. The Listos Grant Unit is responsible for the overall grant management of the Listos California Statewide Grant. This is the LS program. Listos California Target Grant LG program, Listos California Tribal Grant LI program, and the Listos California Cert Support Grant LC program. Questions concerning the RFP, the process, or the programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. CalOES staff cannot assist the applicant with actual preparation of their proposal. CalOES can only respond to technical questions about the RFP during the period of time between the publication date and the completion of the RFP process. The program overview for 2022-23 Budget Act included <clears throat> a 25 million ongoing federal fund appropriation for Cal OES, 8 million for the Listos California statewide grant LS program via a competitive process. Applicants can apply for up to 500,000. 6 million is for the Listos California target grant LG program via competitive process. Applicants can apply up to 300,000. Grant subaward performance period is between June 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2024. Please make note of this date. Submission deadline is Monday, March 20th, 2023 by 5 p.m. via email at listosgrant at caloes.ca.gov. The purpose of the grant for the LS and the LG programs is to support the organizations through California that serve populations with key social vulnerable factors located in areas at, at moderate to high risk from natural hazard. CBOs can work independently or subgrant with local CBOs to provide disaster training and resources to vulnerable and diverse populations. The goal of this work is intended to increase their community's disaster preparedness, 
response, recovery, and mitigation capabilities. The definitions of these for social vulnerability, the potential negative effect on communities caused by external stress on human health. Such stresses include natural or human caused disaster or disease outbreaks. Reducing social vulnerability can decrease both human suffering and economic loss. Another issue is social vulnerability populations include those who have special needs, such as, but not limited to, people without vehicles, people with disabilities, older adults, and people with limited English proficiency. The eligibility criteria for the LISTOS target grant must be a nonprofit organization with a 501c3 status with a service population of less than 1 million people in a given area. For the statewide grant, the LS program must be a nonprofit organization with 501c3 status with a service population of more than 1 million within a single county, multiple counties, and or multiple vulnerable communities statewide. And both the LS and L LG programs must be registered and current in reporting with the general, excuse me, Attorney General's Registry of Charitable Trust. Have an unaltered grant subaward program narrative and grant subaward budget narrative in accordance with the instructions on Part 2, Section B of the RFP. Cal OES cannot accept alternate or modified forms without undermining its neutral competitive selection process and will not read pages more than the maximum allowed. One proposal must be emailed to Listos Grants at caloes.ca.gov by 5 p.m. on Monday, March 20th, 2023. Proposals must be attached as a single PDF and contain the forms outlined in part two of the RFP instructions. Emails should identify the name of the RFP in the subject line. An example is LG RFP hyphen my brother's house organization. Funding for the target grant LG program is 6 million is available for this program. Applicants may apply for up to 300,000. Award amounts are based on the number of engagements an applicant commits to accomplish during the 19 month performance period. Subrecipients may request an advance of up to 25% of their award funds. There is no match required for the LG program. Subrecipients cannot subgrant to other CBOs that have been awarded Listos California grant program funds. The tiers are CBOs commit to engage more than 75,000 or more may receive up to 300,000. CBOs committed to engage 50,000 to 74,999 may receive up to 250,000. CBOs committed to engage 25,000 to 49,999 may receive up to 150,000. For the statewide program, 8 million is available for the LS program. Applicants may apply up to 500,000. Award amounts are based on the number of engagement an applicant commits to accomplish during the 19-month performance period. 
Subrecipients may request an advance up to 25% of their awarded funds. There is no match required for the LS program. Subrecipients cannot subgrant to other CBOs that have been awarded Listos California grant program funds. These tiers are CBOs committed to engaging 500,000 or more may receive up to 500,000. CBOs committed to engage 350,000 to 999, 999 may receive up to 400,000. CBOs committed to engaging 250,000 up to 349, 999 may receive up to 300,000. Preference points will be given to applicants that have communities that reside within the perimeter of a city or county that has received a local, state, or federal disaster declaration within the last five years. Applicants must describe how they are eligible under the declaration and what they are doing to improve their planning, preparedness, and recovery to similar possible future disasters. Programmatic components, first being managing subgrant funds to local CBOs, leases California grant program materials, communication requirement, training, establish and implement a peer-to-peer -peer engagement approach, identify gaps and propose solutions, host a conversation to identify emergency preparedness needs of the community for integration into the local emergency plans, and capture stories of impact. Managing subgranted forms to local CBOs, the subrecipient may subgrant funds to local CBOs who will provide disaster training and resources to vulnerable and diverse populations and have the ability to serve as a fiscal sponsor for the selected local CBOs. The number of local CBOs selected should be informed by the regional picture of variable populations the applicant intends to reach. These local CBOs will engage the greatest possible number of vulnerable members in the applicant's service area to reach the statewide objective of connecting more than 1 million Californians to culturally and linguistically competent support. Listos California grant programs, materials, and communications require Listos California grant materials is required and will be provided by the Cal OES vendor. Further information will be provided once a vendor is selected. If the subrecipient chooses to produce their own materials with the Listos California grant program funds, they must receive prior approval from Cal OES, including Listos California logo. The subrecipient must respond within five business days to all Cal OES required programmatic requests. For training, the subrecipient must be incorporate must incorporate the materials and the resources developed for and provided by Listos California grant program in any emergency preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation training conducted with grant funding. The subrecipient must attend monthly Listos California instructional training offered by Cal OES or a Cal OES designated vendor during the first six months of the grant subaward performance period. 
The subrecipient must attend monthly training classes and meetings to receive updates and resources throughout the grant subaward performance period. We're going to talk about establishing the implement to peer to peer engagement approach. CBOs who request and connect to the region's most diverse and vulnerable populations will create and implement a peer-to-peer -peer approach to engage and educate the community that reflects the needs of the target population. Each CBO must organize their community to establish a tailored approach by hosting monthly engagement activities to ensure their community, one, is knowledgeable about what to do during a disaster and consider engaging community partners such as the faith-based communities, schools, and community centers, etc. Two, has emergency preparedness materials and access to information they need before a disaster hits. Three, is clear on the steps to take to increase their community's disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation capabilities and keep themselves, their families, and communities safe. And four, shares final approach and results with the Cal OES Listos California support team. To identify gaps and propose solutions, the subrecipient must identify gaps raised by the community, input, into the peer-to-peer -peer engagement and organizing process and purpose, propose solutions to strengthen local community emergency plans. Share the recommendations on identified gaps in the solutions with the Cal OES Listos California program support team. Host a conversation. The subrecipient must host a conversation to identify disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation needs of the community for integration into the local emergency plans as a joint effort with the local leaders across the sectors and the county emergency manager. Share outcomes of the conversations with Cal OES, Listos California support teams. Capture stories of impact. The subrecipient must capture stories of impact, highlighting outcomes and results of the local strategies and the connections made as part of its effort that the illustrate the purpose and the intent of the LG and LS program and provide the stories to the Cal OES Listos California support team. These stories may be submitted in written articles, videos, and photos. Please ensure that the formal permission is granted for all stories. Reporting requirements. There are five reporting progress reports required for the program. As you can see below, June 1st through 2023 through September 30th, 2023, gives you a due date of October 31st. This due date is 30 day grace period. This grace period should be adhered to but I recommend that you try to turn in your reports at the first of the month so this isn't forgotten. Engagement reporting. Subrecipients are required to submit data directly through an online database immediately after an engagement activity or training commences or no later than the end of each month. Engagement reports are based upon direct public engagement activities. To determine what constitutes an engagement, refer to the primary guidance for defining and tracking engagements link listed in the RFP. 
The link will direct you to the document that outlines what is considered an engagement. Examples would be events, outreach programs, or demonstrations. Best to review the link to make sure what qualifies. Here's an example of the link for the engagement tra tracking. It spells out the detail of each one of the engagements and how they're viewed. I suggest that you look at the link. The proposal rating sheet is a competitive grant process, meaning that your applications will be ranked in comparison to all other applications received. Each of the above categories contain questions assigned to point value. The point scale is divided into five columns labeled one, two, three, four, and five. The applicant's response to each question is evaluated on the following criteria. Absent, the response does not address the specific question or a response was not provided. Unsatisfactory. The response does not completely address the question. The information presented does not provide a good understanding of the applicant's intent, does not give a detailed information request by the RFP, and or does not adequately support the proposal or the intent of the program. Satisfactory, the response addresses the question and provides a good understanding of the applicant's intent. The response adequately supports the proposal and the intent of the program. Above average, the response is above average and provides a clear, detailed understanding of the applicant's intent. The response presents and persuades presents a persuasive argument that supports the proposal and the intent of the program. And then there's my favorite, excellent. The response is outstanding with clear, detailed, and relevant information. The response presents a compelling argument that supports the proposal and the intent of the program. Here on the next page is your proposal required documentation. These are the documents that will be required for your application. Please remember this is to be included and combined in one PDF when submitting your application. The recommendation for the award decisions are made by the director of Cal OES. Funding decisions are based upon the following, the rank score of the proposal, consideration of priorities and geographical distribution specific to this RFP, and prior negative administrative and programmatic performance if applicable. Once the decision has been made, the applicant will be notified in writing. To those not selected, will receive a denial letter and information on the appeal process. Remember this date, the proposal package must be received electronically no later than 5 p.m. Specific, specific time on Monday, March 20th, 2023 to Listos grants at caloes.ca.gov. A reminder questions concerning the RFP, the process, or programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listos grants at caloes.ca.gov. CalOES staff cannot assist the applicant with actual preparation of their proposal. Cal OES can only respond to technical questions about the RFP during the period of time between the publication date 
and the completion of the RFP process. This concludes the training on the RFP. William, please take it away. Thanks, Cindy. Uh, hi, my name is William Chan. I'm the uh, program specialist with the Lisa's Grants Unit. Today, we're going to give a presentation on the grant subboard proposal process. So today we are going to provide guidance on the components that are required in a proposal, and we are going to review those forms that we referenced just a moment ago and familiarize you with some tools that are available. The process of submitting a proposal begins with a request for proposal being released. This is our competitive process. Within the request for proposal, you will find fund source information, the background of the program, requirements and expected deliverables and instructions on how to apply. So where do you find a request for a proposal? It can be found on the Cal OES website at caloes.ca.gov and on the upper right corner you will click on initiatives and from the drop down menu selection you will select search for grants. So once you're on the search for grants landing page, there are a couple of ways to search. You can find the Lisa's California RFPs by scrolling down on this page, or you can use the search box. I can use the search box when I know which request for proposal I'm looking for. You may type the name of the program in the box, or if you know the two letter program acronym, you may type that in instead. <clears throat> Although we're talking about a request for proposal, I'd like to draw your attention to the mailing list. Uh, when the Cal OES releases the request for proposal, our competitive process for funding, we send an email notification to anyone who has signed up for our mailing list. Please know the only time you will send an email is when we release a new request for a proposal, sending a solicitation to fill a position for one of our advisory bodies, or when we post in public meeting notice. If you are not signed up already, we strongly encourage you to do so so that you can receive these important notices. Cal OES released the Lisos California Statewide Grants Program and Lisos California Target Grant Program request for proposal on February 8th, and our applicants have approximately six weeks to put the proposal packet together from that date. Once complete, applicants will need to email a copy of the proposal packet to the Lisos Grants Unit at lisosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. The same applies for the Lisos California CERT Support Grant LC Program and the Lisa's California Tribal Grant LI program. Let's talk about the request for proposal or RFP itself. The RFP has three parts. Part one is what you have to do. It explains the Public Records Act, the submission deadline, eligibility, grant subboard performance period, funding, and programmatic requirements. Part two refers to policies or administrative requirements and includes references to the subrecipient handbook, components that are required with the proposal, <clears throat> policies concerning the budget, administrative requirements, and required or additional forms that may apply towards your proposal. Part three is a checklist that includes a list of the documents that are required with your proposal and links to the most current forms. This is an example of what the checklist looks like. It includes all the required components and links to each form. Under the additional forms section, these forms may or may not be required depending on what you have in your budget. For example, if you do not have out of state travel, you would not need to include this form with your proposal. Once we receive your proposal, there are some status verification that the program specialist will do right away. For those of you who are who are community based organizations, we will need to check the Internal Revenue Service website and the California Department of Justice website. In the next few slides, I'll go over what exactly we are looking for on each of these sites. But the purpose of this is because the state of California accounting system requires information on these sites to be consistent and current in order to pay you when you submit your report expenditures and request for payments. One of the first things your program specialist will do right away is check your IRS status. But those of you who are community based organizations will need to check your IRS status.
Furthermore, your program specialist will verify the DOJ verification through the website listed in the slide here. It can be verified using your FEIN number, your employer identification number, or, or, or your organization name. We will have this. We will have to select charity registration as to the registration type. As a reminder, the state of California accounting system requires information on these sites to be consistent and current in order to pay you when you submit your report expenditures and request for payment. When you check your registration status, we are looking for it to be current. This makes us happy because we can continue to review your to review and process your proposal. If we see reporting incomplete or delinquent, this makes us sad because we will need you to update your status so that we can continue to process your proposal. If the program specialist contacts you to update your status, please make sure you address this immediately as we do not have control over the length of time it takes to update your status, and we do not want this to affect our ability to, to, to process your proposal or make payments to you if you are selected to receive an award. There are eight forms that are required of every request for a proposal, regardless of the program type. Please note that most programs will require additional forms. So read your request for proposal thoroughly. In these next slides, we're going to tell you about some of the more common mistakes that we find with these eight forms so that you know what we are looking for when we review your proposal. You can find these forms at the very end of the RFP in the checklist section with a hyperlink to each form. But first, here are a few helpful reminders. Number one, read the entire request for a proposal to understand what is required for the program. Uh, two, Please note that all forms have instructions. So if you have instructions about the form, look at the instruction. Uh, sorry, if you so if you have any questions about a form, look at the instructions first, and then email your program specialist for help. Number three, use the current forms. Cal OES updates our forms often. If you're using one of the forms that you've saved on your desktop, it's possible they may have been outdated, and you'll be asked to redo the form, which may delay the processing of your award if selected. OK, let's start with the grant subboard phase sheet. The instructions are on the left, and the most recent version of the phase sheet is on the right. A few of the most common mistakes we find on the grant subboard phase sheet include. The last four digits of the zip codes are often missing. Please be sure to go to the US Postal Services website to look up your plus four and include that on your phase sheet. Disaster slash program title needs to match the name of the program you are applying for. This can be found in the request for proposal. For example, if you're applying to the Least Those California Statewide Grant LS program, then write Least Those California Statewide Grant LS program on line five. Indirect cost rate and federally approved ICR. This is where you will indicate whether you're using the 10 percent de minimis rate on your or your agency's federally approved indirect cost rate agreement. A copy of the approved ICR negotiating agreement must be enclosed in your application if you are using a federally approved ICR. If you will not be claiming indirect costs under this award, type in NA. OK, this is the table that appears on the face sheet. We zoomed in so that you can see it easier. This is where your funding information will go, and you can find this information in your request for proposal. Please note that the grant year and fund source are now drop down boxes and columns A can be typed in and column G will automatically be totaled for you. In your request for a proposal in part one, section F, fund information, you will find the information needed to correctly fill out the face sheet. This is an example of a grant subboard number. There is no need to fill in the grant subboard number in the areas on the quest on the forms requesting it. The subboard number is given once an applicant has been awarded grant funds. This is the grant subword contact information form. The instructions are on the left, and the most recent version of the form is on the right. Here's a list, here's a list of things to keep in mind. Remember to use the most updated forms from our website. Don't forget to write the entire nine digit zip code number. Do not use whiteout to fix corrections. On lines one and two, make sure the number one grant subboard director and the number two financial officer are different. They cannot be the same person. Alliance two and five, make sure the number two financial officer and the number five executive director are different. They cannot be the same person. 
the number seven chairperson cannot be listed again in any of the other positions, numbers one through six. Leave the grant subward number section blank. This will be filled in for you if you are awarded. And lastly, please make sure the official designated by the governing board on line six is the person who signs the grant subaward face sheet. This is the signature authorization form. The instructions are on the left and the most recent version of the form is on the right. When we re review the signature authorization form, we compare it to the contact information form to ensure the grant subboard director and financial officer are the same authorized personnel. You can list alternate individuals to have the authority to sign on grant subboard on behalf of the grant subboard director and financial officer. Just like the grant subboard director and financial officer cannot be the same person, we cannot have one person be an authorized signer on both sides of this form. It is best to have at least one authorized signer for each position. If someone is unavailable and you need to request funds or make a modification, it is easy to do so when you have a different authorized signer for each position. If not, there's nothing you can do until they return. If you want to change authorized signers, you must submit a grant subboard modification to Cal OES as soon as possible because it takes approximately two weeks to process, so it is important to make modification requests immediately when the change has been made internally in your organization. This is the current list of certification of assurance of compliance documents. We have a common mistake in signing and submitting the wrong one. You must receive the one that is tied to the fund source for your program. The checklist in part three of the request for proposal will tell you exactly which one is needed. Another mistake is using an old version of a document. The way to ensure you have the, pro the current version is by downloading it from our website. Again, the checklist will have the link for the correct and current version. Please be sure you're reading this document in full so you know what the requirements are, because when you sign this, you certify that you are compliant. The red arrows are some areas that I want to bring to your attention. Number one, subrecipient is the name of your agency. Please have this match what is written on the face sheet. Number two, the applicant should complete the Cal OES program name and grant subboard performance period. The grant subboard number should be left blank. Your program specialist will fill this in for you. Number three, ensure appropriate signers have signed the documents. This will be the official designee by the governing board. And number four, for community-based organizations, it must be the governing board chair that signs this section. The budget is normally the next document in your proposal. This is Form 2-106B, Grant Subboard Budget Pages Single Fund Source. The Cal OES has three budget categories. Category A is personnel costs, category B is operating costs, and category C is equipment costs. All three categories must be submitted with your application, whether or not you have items in that category. For example, if you do not have equipment, you can write none requested in that category. All three categories must be included in your application packet. The budget spreadsheet template will automatically add the columns on each tab, and please show the equation on each line item as to how you got the total. The personnel category is where, is where you'll want to put salaries, benefits, and overtime for people you employ at your agency. This is also where you will want to put your volunteer hours. The operating category is the meat and potatoes of your program. This is where you'll want to put just about everything else, including rent, travel, training, office supplies, etc. The equipment category is where you'll put non-expendable property having a useful life of more than one year and a cost of $5,000 or more per unit. Just to be clear, if you're buying six laptops at a cost of $1,000 each for a total of $6,000, you put those laptops in the operating expense category, not in equipment, because the laptops per unit price is less than $5,000. Now let's talk about information, the information we need to see on the budget pages. The gold bubbles you'll see on the next few slides contain the elements that need to be included in each calculation for each line item. In this example, we have a program advocate position that's making $4,000 per month. Please note that the salary cost can be shown as an hourly rate, a monthly salary, or an annual salary. Then we want to see the duration. In this example, the program advocate will be paid for 12 months, which probably matches the length of the performance period. And then we want to see the full-time equivalent for the position. In this example, the program advocate will work 50% of the time on this program. 
Then finally, you will want to include a brief description of the line item and explain how it furthers the goals and objectives of the program. For the benefit calculation, you will need to include the benefit rates. In this example, the rate is 22%, multiplied by the total salaries of all employees in the budget that receives benefits. In this example, it's $200,000. And finally, you'll want to include a brief description of what benefits are included. Unless you're paying the volunteers a salary, you should have it in the operating section. Volunteers are also captured in budget category A. The first elements needed is the rate that you have valued your volunteers at. Please note that this rate cannot exceed what it costs your agency to have a staff person doing the same job and that you can include both salary and benefits when calculating the volunteer rates. In this example, the, volunteer, the value of the volunteers is $12 per hour multiplied by the number of hours to be charged to the grants. In this example, 1200 hours. And then include a description of activities that the volunteers will be doing. Now we're going to show you some operating expense examples. So operating. Volunteers that are charged for the following uh, per diem, gas, and mileage should be titled as shown in this slide. Title of the volunteer, title of what they are being charged for. In this example, they are charging to per diem and the name, number of training they are attending. Again, the elements in the gold bubbles need to be included in each calculation for each line item. For this example, we have postage. The amount for postage is $250 per month multiplied by the duration. In this example, it's 12 months, which probably matches the length of the performance period multiplied by how much of the postage will be charged to the grants. Rent is another very common operating expense. For rent, you will need to add up the full-time equivalents or FTEs in budget category A, personnel services. In this example, we have 4.5 FTEs. Then multiply the 4.5 FTEs by 125 square feet per FTE, which is what is allowed as per the subrecipient handbook. And then multiply that by the amount you pay for rent per square foot. Please note that $2 is the up to amount and you should use your actual rates in your calculation. If your landlord charges you 65 cents per square foot, that's the rate you need to use. Finally, you will multiply by the duration. In this example, it's 12 months. If you're claiming indirect costs under this award, please make sure you're calculating the total correctly. Common mistake is multiplying the total award amounts by the indirect cost rate. That is not how you calculate the indirect cost. You will first need to calculate your total direct costs. To do this, you add up any personnel salaries, wages, benefits, operational costs, and up to $25,000 of your second tier sub awards. But do not include any distorting costs such as equipment, rents, capital expenditures, and second tier sub awards beyond the first $25,000. In this example, after doing the calculation, they got $233,215. Once you figured out your, your direct costs, you simply multiply the total by the ICR or federally approved ICR. In this case, 10%. Please make sure the ICR matches what you entered in section seven of the face sheet, and that if you are claiming a federally approved ICR, you must include a copy of your federally of your approved ICR negotiating agreements in your application. So final reminders about your budget. Please be sure you refer to the RFP to identify required and prohibited expenses and that you build your budget accordingly. Be sure to use whole dollar amounts only. Often when your budget is off by a dollar, it is due to rounding errors. So please be sure you're checking the amounts entered in your budget columns. Please include expenses in the correct category. And lastly, all budget line items require justification and calculation. A request for a proposal requires a budget narrative, which allows the subrecipient to provide details about their budget. The budget narrative typically includes how the budget supports objectives and activities, the need for administrative costs, and the necessity for subcontracts. The most common mistakes we see with budget narratives are that sometimes they don't match what's on the budget pages. For example, let's say you submitted your proposal packet and during the review, your specialist determines that several corrections are needed to your budget pages. You make those changes for your specialist, but now your budget narrative doesn't match. So please remember, every time your budget pages are updated, your budget narratives 
must be updated as well. They must match. Next is the programmatic narrative where you where you provide details about how you will meet the objectives of the program. Please be sure you're reading the RFP and that your narrative addresses each of the questions from the RFP. We have often seen applicants use the same narratives that they used the previous year or even perhaps for a different grant that did not address any or all of the questions from the RFP. Next is the grant management assessment form. For Title II, CFR Section 200.332, Cal OES is required to evaluate the risk of noncompliance with federal statutes, regulations, and grant terms and conditions posed by each subrecipient of pass-through funding. This assessment is made in order to determine and provide an appropriate level of technical assistance, training, and grant oversight to applicants for the award reference above. The questions are related to your organization's experience in the management of federally grant, uh, federal grant awards. This questionnaire must be completed and returned with your grant's proposed materials. Your per for purposes of completing this questionnaire, grant manager is the individual who has primary responsibility for day-to-day -day administration of the grants. Bookkeeper slash accounting staff means the individual who has responsibility for reviewing and determining expenditures to be charged to the grant award. An organization refers to the applicants applying for the award and or the governmental implementing agency as applicable. We just spent a significant amount of time talking about the eight required forms for every request for proposal we release, but sometimes additional forms may apply. Be sure to check part five of your request for proposal to find out if additional forms may apply for your organization. So final things to remember, uh, all forms have instructions. Use the forms on the website. Those will be the most current version. The checklist that comes with the request for proposal will tell you which forms are required. Email list those grants at listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov if you have any questions. We are here to help. Use the checklist in part five of the request for proposal. Okay, thank you, William and Katie. This concludes the request for proposal and application overview training for the Listos California statewide and target grant programs. This presentation has been recorded and will be available for on demand viewing later on the Cal OES website. And um, I just want to say thank you all for attending today and good luck on your proposals. I look forward to seeing them. Goodbye.